How's it guys? Welcome back to FX Rhapsody. Today we're going to be doing analysis on Euro USD um, and also the British pound USD dollar. It's going to be a quick video, but before we um, get the chance, just go visit my website. Um, we will find some nice trading material to read. Um, for those of you that's getting started in trading, um, there's some nice video categories. Preferred brokers, these guys are absolutely brilliant when it comes to having a reliable broker behind your site and then also the resource tab. Go look at that. There's some nice resources to download. Also the COT reports, which we, which we use sometimes in our um, analysis, but you can download that for free. That's updated and ready for you to use. Okay, so like I said, it's gonna be a nice quick little video today. Um, so we're gonna looking at we're gonna be looking at the Euro USD first. We're gonna be starting off on the four hour time frame and then moving down to the one hour. So what happened this week? Four hour time frame. This was the beginning of the week. Before we um, see what happened, I want to always I want you to zoom out a little bit. As you can see, um, the euro is in a nice little downtrend. Okay, we can see all these lows being taken out in the market. Okay, there's all the lows that's been taken out in the market. Now there is some other lows that is still there. So I'm just going to highlight these areas in the market. So I'm just going to highlight that. Uh, let's do that. This is all the buy side liquidity. Liquidity, you know, price action likes to hunt these liquidity areas, and that's just below these little um, swings in the market. Okay, so that's always areas that you need to highlight, especially when um, when price is in a trend. You want to see price taking out these areas in the market. Okay, so um, just highlighting those areas, and then we have them and so it's just a little reference that's why i made little dotted lines so it doesn't just overcrowd your your um your uh, chart and to have too many lines in the chart so this week we could see that the euro um started off and you know a little bit of a consolidation in the market and then eventually we saw a nice little downwards movement you know it's a nice continuation downwards um not breaking this low yet and then where we see this low being broken is right about there. Okay, that's the low being broken in the market. Broken in the market. You, for those of you that just trades on the four-hour time frame, you get a swing high. Okay, right there, and then a swing low. But as you can see, I always like price retracing back to the sixty-two percent area. It did not happen on the four-hour time frame. Okay, so. If you were only trading the four hour time frame, you would have missed this trade. And that is why I'm just going to go down to the one hour and I'll show you where the trade is. By just looking at the four hour, just zooming it out a little bit. There we go. We can see that low being taken out, price hunting that liquidity, price going down and just tapping into those other areas in the market, price going up and then tapping that low, just taking out that liquidity and then we see movement. Okay, so as you can see, a nice downwards movement this week that happened. So if we look at the COT reports and we look at the Euro USD, you can see net positions. So um, we might see a continuation downwards because the net positions is lower than the, the week before. So there is definitely some still some downwards movement in the market, but we need to catch those trades. So let's go to the one hour time frame and see how we could have caught this little um, sell opportunity going downwards. Okay, one hour time frame. Um, this was the end of last week. So that was basically the beginning of this. Of, that was the end of the week before, beginning of the week that was just passed last week. We have got on the four hour time frame, we have got these areas marked out as we just saw on the four hour. So you mark it out on the higher time frames just to look at that where the liquidity areas in the market is. So price started, um, so the week basically started off, and as we see, we highlighted these areas in the market. So price tapped into that low, went up again, so, and tapped into that high over there. So just taking out these areas, tap that high, and then we could see a little bit of consolidation still and we saw that on the four hour as well. And this is where you just sit on your hands, you wait. You know, if you are trading only lower time frames, yes, there might be trades going in and out because this swing is basically it's a 30 pip swing. Not a lot, but you know, for those of you that's scalping the market, yes, you could have um, had some nice trades. So there we see the market breaking 
as we saw on the four hour time frame. That's the break that we were waiting for. So now we're looking at, okay, we have a swing high over here after that break. So now I'm just going to leave it there because we're waiting for market to make a swing low. And there, right there, that's a swing low in the market. You can see that big uh, bullish candle in between the bears. That's a swing low. And look at that. This is the four hour, uh, the one hour time frame, guys. So right there, that is where you enter your trade. On the four hour time frame, you did not see that. It did not happen. So we're waiting for price to return to that area in the market. So that's where you enter your sell opportunity. We know the break, or we saw the break in the market. And we know it's a downtrend. We have got areas highlighted in the market. So now you're in the sell position or a sell order. And then you just sit on your hands and you wait. Price consolidating, price moving, going up again, you know, hitting that 62% area constantly. Price just shooting down towards this first target. I'm saying target because this is the areas in the market we want price to go and take out. Then price moves up again, you know, hitting that 62% fully, not going past it. So if you had a stop loss just, be, just above this, you would have still be safe in your trade. So now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So we have got our first target reached already. Not um, If you're trading on the Fibonacci, you're 0%. And you're minus 100%, that's your another target. But we all, we are definitely looking at these areas in the market that price wants to go and take out. And then as we can see, price tapping into that and then price continuing downwards. Okay, that's basically what we're looking for. So continuing, there is definitely opportunities. If you missed that one, definitely, um, you know, there's a video that I made in the beginning of the week. Okay, where we, um, we are traded... I think it was the five minutes on the euro usd go watch that video where you can see this consolidation area how you could have caught some nice buys and sell opportunities in the market so eventually price tapping that taking that second low out tapping our negative 100 percent is two targets okay that's two targets or the second target that's been reached so that already is a what is that it's over 80 pips that you could have made on this one currency pair okay and then price consolidating a little bit, moving up, and then just, you know, hovering over there. So that's basically where we ended up this week. So we have got these areas in the market. As you can see, all these lows have been taken out for this week. And that is what we were looking for. Price hunting that areas in the market. So what I want to do is I want to just wait and see what happens with this high. Will price start turning around? Is this going to be the area the price is just going to start moving up now that it's or was it going to carry on downwards tapping out lower um uh, areas in the market that's lying there liquidity that's lying waiting or is price just going to turn up and move upwards so we want to just keep an eye out on these two areas in the market if there's any break of structure retracement hitting that so we're not predicting we are reacting to what the market gives us okay the reason i'm highlighted these lows is because we were in a downtrend so that is why it's not a prediction it's just we can see we're in the downtrend so we follow the trend the trend is your friend guys follow the trend and then react to what the market gives you and that is how you're going to catch your pips so let's move on to our next currency pair which is going to be the british pound us dollar uh british pound us dollar for our time frame um the reason i'm doing euro usd and british pound us dollar or gpp usd is they are in um can they they move together Okay, in collision, they move together. And um, so this is why I do the two pairs. So if the one goes down, there's, you know, a very good chance the other one is also going down. For our time frame, let's do similar. Let's do a similar exercise to what we were doing on the euro. So we can see a downwards movement in the market. Okay, we see that. Okay, that's happening. So if you zoom out, there's a lot of liquidity areas that market wants to go take out. Do you understand? So again, price hasn't gone and tapped out this one over here. Price hasn't gone and tapped out this one over here. And I'm just going to highlight these areas in the market. Just do that. Just do that. Okay. A couple of lines. What's that? Four lines. 
on the four hour time frame we can see the movement downwards we see that price have been tapping out some of the lows in the market if you zoom out if you zoom in a little bit here okay you can see all these movements in the market there's no fair value gaps that hasn't been filled but if you zoom in a little bit more there we go okay so we have got an area in the market that price has not filled yet there's a little gap fair value gap so let's just move it on zoom out okay so that area just want to see if it's on the hour there we go so that is another area that price is getting drawn towards an imbalance <coughs> fair value gap that's an area that we want highlighted let's just make it another color i think i had it as green as my fair value gaps there we go leave that in market okay so leave it in because that's an area we want price to go and tap out so for our time frame it started out price hopping in and out the market okay then price creating a nice little low okay there we go so that's a nice big area jump price pulling back and then it started moving downwards so if you there we go just like that and then price continuing and again not a lot of opportunities in the market for price to uh, um, for your Fibonacci or whatever you are trading so not a lot of um, sell opportunities again on the higher time frame but I just want to show you how price just takes out these areas in the market and eventually tapping into that fair value gap once it did that then price started moving again moving upwards and now price is just basically hovering over here okay so that's why i'm saying always leave or always highlight these fair value gaps these lows albeit highs if it's in the in the uptrend highlight those areas because price action gets drawn to those areas because below those areas is liquidity price action hunts liquidity and price action gets drawn to or price gets drawn to fair value gaps in the market that's just simple as that so let's go to the one hour time frame and we see where our entries could have been in um, gbp usd for this week okay one hour time frame guys zoomed out because i'm just showing you these are the highlighted or the the marked out areas in the market that's the previous lows that was created before so below all of these areas is liquidity that's area of liquidity price act price hunt those areas zooming in let's have a look so this is the end of or the beginning of last week basically <coughs> excuse me price creating a nice little low breaking that area in the market as we can see it goes down and then it goes up again so price goes and almost hits that i'm just gonna take this out so it doesn't confuse there we go i don't like too many lines in my mark in my charts with this um, big low that was formed, as you can see, there's a gap. Okay, that's going to be opportunity number one. So we highlight that area because we can see that there's a fair value gap, an imbalance in the market. That happened. Price went down. So we're waiting for an opportunity for price to go up, basically up, and then hitting that area, and then we sell off. Okay. That is two areas in the market, or that's an area that price is going to get drawn to because we want price to eventually move downwards and get and, and, and take out that uh, the lows over there. So what does price do? Price hits that area once, it consolidates, it hits it again. So these are two opportunities that you could have taken. This is a nice deeper one. Zooming in, as you can see, it goes into that fair value gap. And then you look at yourself and you're like, okay, cool. Now this is now opportunity for me to sell. So you sell it there. And then price moves down, taking out that first low. Okay, the first liquidity, price takes out. After it does that, price goes up again. You know, people, a lot of people then just say, yeah, it's just fundamental news. And this is why we get these big spikes. I'm not talking about any fundamentals here. This is just total technical analysis. Okay, so be it fundamentals, be it whatever. Price hunts these areas in the market. So for me, if people say, 
um, I'm just, you know, I'm trading, I'm a, fun, fun, a fundamental trader, good for you, you know. Um, but it's not fundamentals that's moving the market, it's price action and it's, it's just hitting these areas. So, like I said, be it whatever you want to call it, price hunts these areas in the market. You get a big lows, big spikes in the market. Why is it doing that spike? Because it's taking out liquidity. Then it moves up again. Okay, that's what it does. So, always be aware of that. Now, because this area, <coughs> excuse me, we just had a half a little in that um, Fair Valley Gap. Price just went halfway in it. It didn't take it out. You know, it didn't fill that liquidity, that, um, not liquidity, Fair Valley Gap. It didn't fill it. So, the reason it went up again, it had to go and fill that gap. And that's why we had this big movement upwards. And then after that, look here. So, that is filled now. So, and especially if you're trading that Fair Valley Gap, you will notice price will always tend to go and past it, you know, fill it or go past it a little bit. And then after that, it shoots in a direction. Now, after this big fall in the market, now you're looking at, okay, now this is going to be my new high. Not, well, there basically, but I'm waiting to see if it creates another movement in the market. So if that was your high, that was your low, price didn't retrace back, as you can see. Okay, this, that, there's no retracement back. Price just carried on. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying, okay, now it's created another new little high in the market because we have a break in structure again. Price going down, it shoots down, takes out this second liquidity area. So now this is going to be my swing high, swing low. I'm waiting for that retracement to the 62 and lo and behold, that's what happens here. That is exactly what happens. Uh, just doing that color and then doing my other color. There we go. Goes up again and you sell off, guys. You sell over there. That's it. There's too many boxes that's been ticked here. Okay. So really taking out the fair value gap over here. It's gained my momentum, as you can see, after it took it out. It's gotten momentum to go downwards, taking out some more liquidity that's over here. Moving up, retracing back, 62%. I mean, this just box is being ticked. Guys, sell, sell, sell. So you sell over here. And then where's your targets? Your targets is obviously going to be your 0% and your negative 100. But beware. There's liquidity areas that will be taken out. Yes, towards that. But be aware of this area over here. It's not always that price goes way past your, uh, your fair value gap. So when it goes into that gap, yes, take your profits, guys. Take your profits. And that's what it does. So price goes down, takes out some lows again. Some, it takes out two lows at one time. And then after it does that, you know, that is, it moves up a little bit again. And we can see price going into that fair value gap. It basically takes it out, as you can see. Basically, it fills that gap. And that is where you exit your trade. So we had an 80 pip move on the first currency pair that we that we traded, and there is a 100 pip move. So depending on how many pips you want to catch a week, for me, you know that's it's two currency pairs, 180 pips move. And after it did that, and as we can see, we saw it on the four hour time frames as well. Price just started moving up, coming down. So now what we want to do is, first of all, take all this at the mark. Take all this out because it's just cluttering our charts because it's been filled. Once a fair value gap gets filled, you know, remove it. It's irrelevant now. So now what we're going to look at, we want to see this area, what's going to happen in this area. And then we want to see what's going to happen over here. Will these, will this high or the low be taken out? We are going to wait and see what happens in the market this week and then trade accordingly. So guys, that's all from my side. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Show me some love by hitting that super thanks. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And then be on the lookout for more videos coming your way this weekend. So guys, I hope you've been having a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and happy trading.